in that game all game long. Like, way, 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 way behind. Um, so I don't have any problem with um, opening roaches as I try to um, get this eyelash or something out of my eye. Oh, God, that's poking the hell out of it. Oh, my God. Ha, oh, ha, oh, victory. Oh, my eye feels better now. Um, the, the, the question I, or, or the issue I have with the way that was stated was, if you spot mech coming. So that actually turns out to be a little bit tough. A lot of times you will be able to see a factory early on, um, but your opponent could be going Hellion Marine early on directly into barracks play. Very, very typical opening for, for a Terran. He could be going uh, a reactor at the barracks to be going double Hellions. Very, very normal opening early on. That doesn't give away a lot about what's coming up. I mean, hell, in those two deviations I just said, Terran could be getting a starport to be getting a bunch of Vikings to, or even Banshees to do stuff. So um, what I would actually say is, stylistically, opening 100 gas for speed zerglings works pretty well against mech and uh, marine maraudering players equivalently. Just because Zerglings with Speed can track down the Hellions, Zerglings with Speed can easily surround all those um, um, barracks units. So that becomes very, very effective. And there are some also excellent ways to go um, Roaches that are equally versatile against all these things. So um, I would personally um, say, yeah, there's nothing wrong with doing either of those. Sounds great. Um, but just be careful that you're not relying on the ability to see what your opponent's doing. Um, because sometimes, sometimes you can't quite do that. Um, so 510 says, Dear Day9, what would be the biggest threat to this mech push with the tanks? Or what would be the biggest threat to this mech push with the tanks uh, that you'll encounter against Zerg? What should the Terran look for and how, how do you adapt the push to what the Zerg's doing? I actually think that the composition that Dayfly hit upon is, is pretty damn good. It's just a nice, versatile little mix. You already have the blue flame upgrade. You have a decent amount of marines for your bunkers. And you have three or so tanks. I think the biggest threat that you'll have is pretty much what we got to see in game one on Blistering Sands. The fact that um, if you're against a good enough Zerg player, he'll just have enough stuff. <laughs> you know, I mean, after z -Pucks lost his expansion... He still was ahead in the food, and then the Tunneling Claws came, and they did a ton of damage and crushed the push. And despite losing his expo and a bunch of drones and a queen and all this other misery, z -Pucks was still doing pretty damn well. So that's what I would say is the biggest threat, is the post-push period. So um, definitely be aware of that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. So, um, uh, let's see here. So Kaz Node says, Day 9, when I play Zergris Terran... I have trouble with quick mech contains that limit me to two bases max via bunkered infantry and tanks. In game one, Zipux deals with it via Roach Burrow. Are there any other options? Um, so this is where um, a lot of testing comes into play because there's a lot of stuff that you can just sort of say in theory, but it's so close that it really needs to be tested. My initial feelings are um, that a lot of speed zerglings would probably do well to deal with this push, probably shut it down before it even gets up and running. Or even to do something with Baneling Speed Zergling would be an, uh, another adequate way to deal with it. And I also think that, you know, having an, a lot of spine crawlers and getting Mutalisks up would be a good way to repel it. I personally am favoring getting very, very fast Mutalisks in this, in this, in this matchup to be able to sort of push that stuff back. Um, honestly, even though Dayfly has what I call a really nice, solid composition that's versatile... It's solid, it will do a lot of damage to the hatch a lot of the time. It's still pretty thin. You still do need good micro, good positioning, very careful, calm, slow advancement for it to be able to work, and a variety of Zerg stuff will be able to crush it if the Terran isn't careful. Um, but, again, you, you also need to play equivalently solid as Zerg. So, Zergling, Baneling bus, getting Mutalist to just force him to pull back, or just mass zergling or some other options that I would just throw out there as 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 thought as thought things. So um um you know I will just take actually two more questions because again I am just so so tired. Whoo man. Okay, let's just do one more thing. 
Um, do 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 Oh yeah, here is El Ganzo, says Senor Day 9. Hey, I love that that good old Hispanic bent there. Even put the Enya there. Yeah. So Senor Day 9, you mentioned naked Thors. So if I decide to build Thors, should I get armor upgrades ASAP? Um I actually think that the just the uh the regular bullet upgrade, just the attack upgrade, there it is with the bullet upgrade. <laughs> you wanna upgrade your bullets, man. Um, I think that the attack upgrade is, is more, wow, actually that's, Jesus, that's a great point. So, way back when this was played, because again, this was played on a, an older patch, when uh, Thors did 6 damage plus 6 to light, and then they shot 4 times, so against a mutilisk, or so against a mutilisk, they would do 48 damage, just do 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 do. Um, and when you got an upgrade, it would be up to plus 7, plus 7. That's plus 8 damage per upgrade. Whoa, that's a lot. Jeez. Um, but if you were going naked Thors, Mutalisk bounces do go in 3s. So again, they go 9, 3, 1. So then they would be going 8, 2, and then a little bit less. You know what? And, and also in the most recent patches... Um, Thors only get a, a plus 4 damage boost instead of a plus 8 damage boost. So now I'm really starting to think, you know, I still am leaning towards the attack. I wouldn't so much just say, yeah, you should get armor upgrades ASAP. Uh, instead, what I would say is that naked Thors in small numbers are vulnerable to mutilisks. I mean, especially if you can even throw any number of small zerglings in there. So what I would say is that you have a lot of early push opportunities with Thors. And a lot of slightly later push opportunities with Thors. You can push with like 8 Marines and 1 or 2 Thors and be pretty damn strong. Or you can wait a little bit and push with like 5 or 6 Thors and be okay. Um, but it's that middle number, like 2 to 5, where you're vulnerable to a lot of Mutalisks. So I don't think armor upgrades is the key. I would rather get attack and embrace the inability to attack with the Thors and just do a little bit more powering. So yes, yes, yes. Um, you know what, I'm just going to take this last question uh, by Sam Blitch. Day 9, what do you think is the best way to stay conditioned for playing StarCraft 2 while the beta is down? Well, I use um, QXC's Build Order Tester, and there's a lot of um, new Build Order Testers coming out. Another recent one is the Yabot Build Order Tester, Y-A-B-O-T, just Google that. That's the yet another Build Order Tester, Build Order Tester. Um, that's what Yabot stands for. Pretty fun to say, eh? Um, use a build order tester so that way you can load it up and just fiddle around and just happily build stuff. You know, go through your build once or twice. For instance, I love looking for electronic music. So I love excuses to be searching for music and idly doing something else. Um, so I'll open up my Pandora and be searching for my electronica while I'm doing my build order tester. Or, you know, I'll call up my friend on the phone and just let chat while I, you know, idly tap my, my build orders out after a long day of working and trying to get all my stuff done. You know, it's a good way to just sort of um, get your hands used to continuing to play. I, I see nothing wrong with, with dabbling in a build order tester. Um, also, I've been re-watching a lot of my ancient replays. You know, because a lot of people are just, are just like, oh, I want my patch 16 replays to work, my patch 15 replays to work. But I've actually been looking at like, my patch 7 replays. Because <laughs> it's kind of funny looking back then, because... You feel like your knowledge is cumulative. That, well, I knew 50% of stuff when I started out, and now I know up to 100% of the stuff I know. So I will look about 50% as good way back then. Uh, but really, if you go look at some of your ancient replays, you'll actually go, wow, my brain was in a, in a completely different place then. And you can actually learn some from your old self. Um, so definitely review your replays, play a little bit, watch other people's replays. Uh, you know, you always hear me talk about getting a training buddy. Uh, get a replay exchange buddy. Say, hey, is there any chance we can just, like, exchange our last 20 replays with each other? I just want to, I really want a chance to see in-depth how somebody plays. So um, go create a thread about that somewhere. A replay exchange thread. So um, that is going to wrap up Day 9 Daily number 133. Uh, all these have been recorded um, in HD, but again, the audio is getting off sync. So I'm trying to figure out something about that. Uh, the wonderful, wholesome, and gorgeous man, Diggity, 
is going to be helping me uh, with some encoding issues in the coming days. Um, but I will um, hopefully be getting these up in HD. Until then, they will be upgraded or uploaded in standard definition. Boo. But, you know, no big deal. So with that, I am going to head out uh, and go to bed. Yay! Going to bed. Going to bed. See you guys.